exporting situation in New Zealand. Let's move on now to the rest of the day's news. We're going to bring in our political panel of the afternoon, Labor MP Alicia Payne and Nationals MP Mark Coulton. Thank you for joining me this afternoon. Let's get straight into it. The states certainly appear to be at war right now over National Cabinet's plan to reopen. Alicia, we'll start with you. This week, Anastasia Palaszczuk all but backed away from this national plan. Mark McGowan already has. Where is Australia heading? Thanks, Danica. Well, we all want to get out of lockdown as soon as possible, but there are some really important questions that remain that the Prime Minister needs to answer, and hopefully will after today's National Cabinet, about whether we will proceed with these plans while tracing and con contact tracing and other systems are not working at best practice. They currently aren't in New South Wales. He needs to answer what uh, we are going to do about vaccinating our children. Um, because the Doherty modelling makes it very clear that if we do proceed when those systems aren't operating at um, full capacity, that there will be hundreds and hundreds more deaths. And I don't think okay. anybody wants to see that. OK, just in regards to children, though, what, what age cohort are you referring to? Because by all accounts this week, a number of medical professionals have come out and said that at this stage it is unclear how COVID affects under 12s and whether or not that co cohort needs to be vaccinated. Well, I don't know if parents are happy with uh, unclear as the decider for how we proceed with this. And as Andrew Barr, the Chief Minister this morning in the ACT has called for, it would be great to see some more research on that around how the Delta variant actually does impact children because we don't fully know it yet, except that it is affecting them a lot more than earlier strains. Mark, where to from here? Should the federal government pull Queensland and WA into line as the country looks to reopen at 80%? Look, we've got to look, use every, uh, every tool of persuasion we can. My electorate's got about 900 kilometre boundary with Queensland and uh, my border communities uh, are in a, a lot of stress. Uh, uh, you know, a lot of uh, uh, my New South Wales uh, constituents get their health services from Queensland. They've got kids at boarding school. Uh, the grain harvest is, a, is, is a only sort of six weeks away and uh, a lot of the grain from my electorate gets delivered into the Darling Downs and, uh, uh, and Gundawindi and places like that. And so apart from the health aspects, uh, these uh, hard borders are, are really impacting on Australians and I'm not quite sure that uh, uh, I think, you know, Queensland is in a bit of a fool's paradise at the moment. My electorate at the moment is undergoing, uh, you know, quite a significant... Uh, uh, onslaught from the uh, Delta variant of COVID and uh, uh, the idea that, uh, you know, a line on the map is going to protect Queensland, uh, I think is a very temporary measure. And I think we need to look at this as a nation. Uh, we, we are, a, a, you know, a, we are, a, we've never, ever been divided like this uh, uh, before, not for, not since Federation anyway. And it's, uh, it's yeah. not. It's really impacting on uh, on on our people. Well, the there's there's certainly a lot to discuss today at National Cabinet. Uh, there's been a, a number of key topics this week. Uh, also this afternoon, the Prime Minister announced a deal with the UK to import four million Pfizer doses, uh, and this month will double uh, its September supplies. Uh, Alicia, we're now 18 months in. Is it too late? It is another example of too little, too late. These deals should have been done earlier. We should have been vaccinated earlier. Um, but it is pleasing to hear that uh, it was pleasing to hear that the ACT would get um, our share of those vaccines this morning, and, and it's it's good news. But it is too late. Um, we should have been vaccinated earlier. If we were, we wouldn't. So many of us wouldn't be in lockdown now and facing the issues that Mark was just talking about. We are unfortunately running out of time today, but Mark, I do want to ask you about the very serious situation uh, where you are, of course, you're the member there in Parks. Uh, are vaccines getting into the arms of the most vulnerable there? Yes, look, I've just uh, had a meeting with the Royal Flying Doctor Service. They've done 20,000 people across the, the most regional and remote areas. Uh, uh, in Dubbo, in my electorate, uh, uh, the vaccination rates have, have, gone, have escalated, obviously, with the... Uh, since the outbreak there. So there's more and more opportunities uh, for people to uh, obtain vaccines and uh, some of the early hesitancy uh, that was there uh, is largely been overcome. We've got uh, OSMAT teams, the, the military, uh, you know, the Royal Flying Doctor Service, the local health district, in some cases going door to door to help allay people's fears. And uh, that vaccination rate is climbing. 
uh, and uh, you know the people in uh, Western New South Wales uh, are stepping up, and, and that supply is increasing by the day. Yeah, that's really great to hear. Unfortunately, we have run out of time. We are a little bit pressed for time today. Alicia Payne and Mark Coulton, we do have to leave it there. Thank you for joining me. Thanks, Danica. Thanks, Danica.